happy Wednesday. It's about that time, you guys. I am so fired up. I see Bree is already online. She's tuning in and she's like, have a great show. We absolutely will, Bree. Thanks. Look, you guys, I am so happy to introduce just um, my goodness. Like, where do I start? Where do I start? So many things I could say about our today's guest on Ready, Set, Real Estate. Uh, Thomas T.J. Lofton started out in the car industry, and he is now in in the real estate industry, along with a a, a plethora of other industries. But I just want to just take this time to say, T.J., welcome to the show. (laughs) You looking good, brother. You looking good. (laughs) Thank you, you, Queen. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to just jump on in here and just set the stage for us. For those of you who are new to Ready, Set, Real Estate, this is a platform that supports our nonprofit Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation, which our mission is to uh, empower the next generation with real estate literacy, careers, and overall empowerment for their lives. And TJ and I got together when I first introduced my book, and I just want to just take this time to say thank you to this brother because the speaking platforms and panels and other doors that you have seen opened up for me is because of TJ. I just want to just give credit where credit is due is because there are a lot of people out here that say, I can do this. I have done this. I can help you do this. And there's a better way to do it and a go about it, go about doing it. But being an author, it was not my forte. I sell real estate. That's what I do. And he saw what an amazing gift that I had a message that needed to be received. And TJ has jumped into Uh different groups and schools that he has plugged me into. And so I just am honored to say, can I just pay homage to you now on my show? (laughs) How long? Two and a half years later? Man, I'm just so stoked. (laughs) I'm so stoked for this. TJ, please um, say hi, say hello, introduce the people, introduce yourself. And I'm just going to jump into how how you went from car, the car industry, building cars to real estate. And today's focus is gentrification. And you have traveled in various parts of this country and in various uh, organizations, you have spoken and been on various panel discussions talking about this and along with being on radio. So you've been on various media outlets talking about what we're talking about today. And so I just want you to get into that. Oh, Thomas T.J. Lofton, he just disappeared. So we'll wait for him to get back. I don't know what happened to his connection, but oh, you're back. Okay, good. I'm bringing you back on, T.J. Cool. I'm bringing you back on. And he's back. Okay, cool. TJ, you're back. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure we're sound checking. Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. I'm like so excited. I'm so high energy, especially because I just came off of a plane. And when I do trips and I do tours and also seeing the gentrification that is happening in San Francisco, out in Oakland, various parts, Philly, Jersey, everywhere. So this is not a foreign discussion. This is a much needed discussion. This is a timely discussion. And what you talk about is monetization of gentrification. So TJ, please jump right in. <laughs> oh, wow. Just threw me out there. Okay. <laughs> I think, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this platform. You know, I I've been watching from the shadows, like just honored to see you doing your thing. And I'm like, I love to see productive, progressive people. And you've been growing seriously, you Thank know, you. putting words out. You know, I love, like I said, like you were saying, I saw that book and I was just too excited that somebody else has realized that these young people get it. Right. They, they're not waiting to go to college. They, they like, hey, I'm nine. I want to learn something now. Right. I don't want to go play with my toys. I want to learn what you're doing, mom. Dad, can I help? You know, yeah. like yeah. tell me what this mortgage stuff is about. What are you? What? What's? What, why are you bailing off that paper every month to keep the lights on? How does that work? Right. Well, right. That, you know, you stepped this out. This is where it started, you guys. If you guys haven't had a chance, this is where he saw what I brought, and he said, "Oh my goodness, we could just we could just build together." And that's what it's about. And that's why I said I just want to thank you, TJ, because it really meant a lot for me 
especially when I, people do this. And when you're on a budget, it takes money and time and energy for me to invest in myself and in this. And you say, you know what? We could build together. So that's why I wanted to spotlight. Bree said teamwork makes the dream work. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Please go ahead. <laughs> it's important that we work together because, you know, I see you you out there doing your thing and you just working hard and working hard, but I see a lot of things that you're not doing. Yes. That I'm doing. Right. All I got to do is say, Hey, I'm going to bring you over and, and give you a, a piece. You know, right. they, they gave me an hour, but all I really need is 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Right. You've heard that other 10 or 15 or something, you know, it's yes. simple like that. It's very, now all of a sudden you got my following. I got some of your following. And that's how it's supposed to be, you know? Right. So it's the same thing with this real estate. It's like people are out here struggling, having problems. And here we are with the answers to a lot of these people's problems, you know? Right, right. So share with us your transition from the car industry, because you have some big names that you've worked with. I know they don't know, but I've been on a panel discussions with people that have been with the lowrider community that have uh, been part of these movies that came out and a whole bunch of stuff. You know your story better than yours. I have continued to learn your story as being part of your panel discussions and part of your, your group and your team that I've seen the big names. You've been in the mix. You've been in the seven-figure community and you've been in the lower-end community and you really have been putting a lot of groundwork uh, in the community. So I just, again, we're worldwide. So people get to know about TJ that's been shipping cars to Japan. By the way, this is the first brother, the first African-American that was shipping lowriders out to Japan. Um, I just had to put that out there, documented, and that's facts. <laughs> right. You know, like you said, I grew up in Compton, California, and it was a way of life with lowriding. Everybody right. had a lowrider. Everybody's first car, second car, only car was a lowrider was a Chevy Impala or something. So, you know, of course I grew up wanting one, you know, so by the time I got old enough to work on them, I, I'd always been around those cars my whole life, seeing guys building them. And and one of the guys, rest in peace, uh, older guy named Gary May, he told me, he said, TJ, he said, keep working on these and you'll never be broke. And, you know, everybody was against it back then and they didn't like it. They 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 tried to put it together with gangs, but it was like, no, you got a lot of different people love cars, so it's a, it's a way of life. Fast forward the story, I stuck with it. You know, opted out of going to college because I'm like, wait a minute, these guys are making five and six thousand dollars from one person. And I remember my mom at a young age told me she makes three thousand dollars a month working, and I'm like, that guy just made five grand, and he didn't even have to go nowhere. You know, right. he's sitting in the garage working on a car. Right. But, you know, over the years, it grew. I helped to take it out of the garage and, and take it into the mainstream media. I was the first African-American that started advertising in a, a national publication. I'm sorry, global publication. I held the record for being in there the longest. You know, I, I ran an ad from probably, uh, two, that was in, nine, I can't even think of, 1992 or probably the 2009 you know, and that's I was the one who let people know that there is African Americans in this industry who's mm -hmm. leading the industry. So now low riding, when I started, it was probably three thousand cars. Now there's over ten million low riders worldwide. So I was one of the brothers who pioneered that industry and decided that, you know, we putting cars in videos and these guys from Japan wanna buy them. People in Germany are wanting to buy these cars, Australia, New Zealand, et cetera, worldwide. So I started dealing with these guys and creating relationships and shipping cars overseas. So within that, I turned around and I started buying up a lot of those Chevy Impalas to store to build for future business. Okay. And of course, I needed a lot of a lot a lot of room to store those cars. Okay. So, so in Los Angeles, I probably had like ten different locations: ten cars here, fifteen cars there, twenty cars here. Very unaffordable for me, you know. So mm -hmm. eventually somebody dropped a, 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 some knowledge on me, said, maybe you should move all that stuff up to Palmdale or something, buy you some land. I was like, oh, yeah, let's try that. So, I, you know, I had tow trucks. I had car carriers, car transporters. I had trailers, uh, flatbeds, all type of stuff. So I moved up there, bought some land, 
consolidated all my stuff with one move, saving mm-hmm. thousands of dollars a month. So I because I grew that industry, I helped a lot of my friends come out of the backyard and, and start businesses. You know, so now we're dealing with real estate. We're dealing with leases. We're dealing with uh, 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 purchases. You know, because nobody wanted all these lowrider guys sitting out in front of their building, so right. they, they didn't want to rent to us. So that forced me to learn how to deal with this purchasing of, of, of commercial buildings. Right. You know? So let me let me pause that thought because I just was I was just about to say that. So you basically, it's not like you were you were focused on. I need to jump into real estate. You were forced by your business growing that right. you now had to learn real estate and how to restructure your business so that it's cost effective. Because like you said, it was costing you to store to store this. And, and we see that all the time, right? Um, in terms of being out in the community, people, not, you don't have space to have a shop and they're doing this in their driveway. But you know, and you have to be careful because zoning is an issue with that too, depending where you are. <laughs> right. You know, and it was it was very interesting for me and a lot of my guys because you got to remember we put a lot of lowriders in commercials, car, and TV shows, movies, and uh, rap videos. So right. those rapper guys or celebrities would come in and have cars restored through us. So mm-hmm. imagine I'm sitting here. You know, got my two thousand dollar a month rent to store my, you know, where I got ten cars maybe that I'm building, and all of a sudden, for example, I remember specifically Tupac came in my shop one day to check on a car I was building for one of his videos, and the landlord just happened to be there that day, and he flipped out. So the next, I think the next day I got a letter in the mail saying my rent was going up. Mm. And then as I talked to my buddies, they would all we would all have the same problems like. The landlord is seeing all of this star power coming in here and they're realizing we're making a lot of money so we can raise their rent. Let's keep raising. So that was like the common thing to do. They just kept raising our rent. Wow. And then and then one day I got lucky enough to see, wow, they put a for sale sign across the street. I wonder what they want for that building, you know? And then it blew me out the water. Like, wait a minute, that's going to be cheaper than my rent <laughs> if I buy it. I- Put twenty thousand down, and my rent is gonna be some would save a thousand on a on a mortgage on, on a more paying a mortgage versus. Oh, I think you froze. Well, give him a moment. Let me just give him. Let me just ping him real quick because I think we we lost him for a second. We lost you. We'll give him a sec. So if you just chimed in, you guys, we are on Ready, Set, Real Estate. And I am so excited about today's topic, in particular, because um, we're talking about something that everyone is saying in terms of this buzzword, this buzzword of gentrification. And it's important to understand the perspective of that. Um, and a lot of people, okay, cool. He's coming back on you guys. And a lot of people have been very intimidated by that. So TJ, we had lost you for a second. So I just wanted to bring people up to speed who are just joining and letting them know that we were getting caught up with your story and your business growing to the point that you had to invest in yourself and invest in land to store your cars to where now you're looking at real estate. You're now looking real estate development um, bring us up to that because I know that story. Let's talk about that. And I want to make sure we get to getting people connected with you and learning more about you and what you're doing and upcoming events because you are attending an event. you got a couple events coming up. So I just want to bring up to speed. So you've got the cars, you've got the storage, and then we're talking about um, land development. Yeah. So... I had one one location where I probably had a hundred cars at tow trucks, car carriers sitting on this land in Palmdale, California. In the years of two thousand two to two thousand six, that was the fastest growing city in America because of gentrification. They were moving all the people, you know, the lower income people from the L.A. area, pushing them up to Palmdale. So. That meant they were doing a lot of development. So someone approached me about buying one of my land, some of my land where I was keeping some of my cars at. 
And I'm thinking like, you know, they knew I only paid, I think, uh, what, $1,500 for it or something. And they offered me 50. And I'm like, you know, $50,000 is not enough money to move all these cars. So fast forward the story, they offered me more money than it was really worth. And I was like, wow, okay, I guess I better right. start moving cars. Right. But it was, I found out later, it was a part of a major corporation and okay. they built a major store there. And I was like, whoa. So I started looking around <clears throat> and I started seeing the development and I got more offers. Then I noticed a lot of big houses going up. And I just started realizing maybe I need to start building stuff myself because I own the land. They're taking my land, buying me out, and they're building biz, biz, businesses on it. They're building houses on these lots. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I could build a car. So I definitely could build a house because I grew up in high school. I had the trades. I had wood shop. You know, I right. learned about this at a very young age, you know. So that's where, again, how we get back to teaching the youth. I was fortunate enough to be <clears throat> able to see this stuff at a very young age. So I knew what Blueprints was when I was 9 and 10 years old. I knew it, how to lay out a property and a setback from the street. I understood that language because I was a part of that conversation. So I right. decided, let me start developing my own stuff. So I'll never forget a guy came in my shop and he had some uh, dry wood. I'm sorry, some uh, some sheetrock in there, some, some sheetrock to go in the house. And I'm like, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm building some houses up in California City. And I'm like, what are you, you know, what is it costing you to build the house? Well, I buy the land for about a thousand bucks and it's cost me about 90,000 to build a house. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. I think he said 50,000 and he's selling them for 90,000. This was like way back in the day. Right. Right. Like, I'm spending 50,000 building the convertible 59 back here and I'm only going to sell it for 90, hopefully 100. But right. he's, he's spending 50 and he's making more money than me. And he's turning them around faster than I am. And he's wow. building multiple houses. And I right. just realized, I said, I need to, I can do that. Right. I, I started. Go ahead. I, no, I was going to say one of the things that as you're saying that it's twofold because <clears throat> housing there, as we all know, there's, there is an issue with housing availability. So I can appreciate that. There are investors, there are builders, there are flippers. Like we all are all, we're all part of an integral needed dynamic where sometimes people get thrown aback about what's happening with the development of the community. But I look in retrospect and say, how long have you been in that community and have not vested into that community? Right. And there's then the outside corporate, I'm saying outside corporations come in or they expand and find better use value. Cause in real estate, the, the, the key thing in real estate that if, if it's anything anybody needs to understand is that highest and best use is always going to supersede that property and the right. use of that land. If right. you are not exercising highest and best use in that land, you got to go. Right. Absolutely. You got to go. And I, and, and this is things that people, I can, I get it from a perspective when you feel you're being overwhelmed and taking pat, uh, uh, taking over. And I, and I'm not, I definitely want to be sensitive to what's happening over the country. But, th but again, during the last administration, borrowing money was at an all-time low. Right. It was at an all-time low to come in and get cheap money to do what you're talking about, right? Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> and there was opportunity available. There was opportunity available for people to come in and do what you're talking about. And I just want you to say this out loud for people who, especially who are viewing and they're based in California and they'll catch it on the replay, they'll share it. But especially as a real estate professional here, we talk about how expensive it is to purchase. Please share with people what your perspective is on that. How expensive it is to purchase? Yes, we we said California. Oh, it's so expensive in California. It's, the real estate market is so expensive. Please share your perspective on that. You have a quote that I like that 
has been right. carried forth. And I make sure when people say it, I'm like, you give credit to TJ for that. Cause that's it. That's his saying. <laughs> people. And that's, that saying is even changing now. People <laughs> always say it's more expensive to buy in California. California is too expensive to buy. So I'm going to move to Atlanta, but I always tell people California is not expensive. LA County is expensive. Is that the one you're referring to? Yes. <laughs> LA County is expensive. So now we have to start reaching out further. You don't have to go all the way to Houston or Atlanta and all these different places to find affordable housing. You just have to change your mindset on the way you look at things, learn something new, <clears throat> meaning we have to go back to the roots. What did we do during our roots? We didn't go to places and buy houses. We bought land. And we built the house. And we built them. Same thing Monopoly teaches us. You know, we buy yes. the land. We turn yes. around. We can't build one house on it. Yes. We have to build three minimum, which is show yes. it, it's cheaper to build than it is to buy. So right. I see a lot of people. So I see a lot of people. They're, they're backwards. You know, it's like this microwave society. I want it now. I don't want to grow my food. I want to just go to Burger King. I want to just pop something in the microwave in one minute and I'm ready to eat. Well, that's when we started losing massive amounts of money because when we were building houses, we were building at a quarter of the cost or a fraction of the cost and we could what we can buy them for currently. Now, because of these bidding wars and people coming in paying cash and these non-experienced investors coming in, they're driving the price of real estate through the roof and they're making it where your average person, your everyday your everyday person with a college degree, married couples that both Very have college degrees, doctors and lawyers that are married, bringing in 400000 a year, can't afford it. They can't find a house. You know, they can't afford mm -hmm. to buy a house because they can't pay cash. They can't pay cash for a house. So it's really knocking a lot of people out the box. So what does it do, though? It opens the door for us to go back to our roots. So you look at cert certain neighborhoods, you think, well, I can't never afford to live in that neighborhood. That neighborhood got two, three million dollar houses. Well, guess what? You may not be able to afford to buy in that neighborhood, but you definitely can afford to build in that neighborhood. So go right. look for some land in that neighborhood and you will always most likely find a vacant lot that you can turn around and buy for a fraction of the cost and put up a brand new house in that neighborhood. And guess what? We'll move in with this thing that people are seeing less of called equity. <laughs> you, right. know? You, you know, he, and that's an interesting perspective because I think I shared with you in terms of our neighbor who... He had transitioned and I'm definitely going to bring I'm going to uh, bring someone on the show to talk about probates, um, which means uh, properties are subject to probate that if when you die, you transition and there's no one on title uh, for that to be a seamless transition or you don't have it in a living trust. Um, wills are subject to probate. And that means that whoever you think is going to inherit your property will have to go through court to get it. So that's a sidebar. But I wanted to bring up this point that this TJ, this brother, if you remember, I said this brother had um, about three plots of land in Kern County. That's Bakersfield, right? Kern County. And he just it, it wasn't it was undeveloped. He just bought it and held it. I think that's genius. Buy and hold until. When when everybody else catches up with that area and they start developing, they're going to seek uh, seek you out, which is what happened to you. That's what you said. You bought a piece uh, next to when they were building a shopping center, right? They came and said, "Hey, we uh, we want to offer this. We want to offer you something." <laughs> it's like you know, it's just it's a trip. It's a trip that people are not realizing perspective. So uh, we're going to get ready to wrap this up, TJ. We just wanted to come on and build. We'll definitely have you back on and get caught up with you. Please tell us what is up next for you. What's next? Any upcoming events, workshops? Because I know you do all of that. Tomorrow I'll be in Sacramento filming a panel discussion on economics. The documentary is entitled Happy, H-A-P-I. So check it out. Uh, they went all the way from Africa back to America, talking about the roots of economics, of entrepreneurship. And then no next month, November, the I believe 16th, 17th or something like that, and 18th or 17th, 18th, 19th, I'll be in Atlanta 
at the Black Power Awards teaching a workshop on monetizing gentrification or wealth by gentrification, because we have a lot of things going on around the country that most people are not aware of. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's called high prices. We're being priced out of home ownership. So we really have to pay closer attention to that. So that's why I've been traveling around the country speaking on it and, and comparing notes with our scholars around the country. So we've right. been addressing the problem because right. a lot of people, because of these high prices here in California, it's pushing people out of California and they're moving to Atlanta, they're moving to Texas, they're moving to Detroit, they're moving to Arizona, and we're pushing their prices through the roof. Mm. We're, used to, yeah, we're, we're used to paying three and four hundred thousand dollars for a home here in Los Angeles, but when we go to Atlanta and we see houses that are triple the size of our houses and they're only 129000 we go out there and pay cash. So that makes the people in Atlanta say, well, shoot, if they're paying cash, I'm going to jack the prices up. So now the people who's been paying 110000 for an amazing house or 70000 for a small house, they're being priced out. Wow. So we're having large amounts of homelessness going on around the country. So that's what got me into doing what I'm doing now, which is coaching people and, and, and helping people to understand how to make an investment in real estate. So if anyone's interested in that, can I get my information out? I got your website up. What's the number? Go ahead. Uh, Area code 310-619-3954. And they can reach out to me at the same Thomas T.J. Lofton on all my social media, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. You go on YouTube, please click subscribe. Uh, Go on the Facebook page and click follow. You know, but we need to all keep communicating with these things that's going on in real estate because we got a lot of people who just genuinely cannot afford to live here. You know, we got right. people who can't afford to live in Atlanta. They're dealing with the same problems we're having. People are you know, saying- that, I wanted to just kind of jump in because I just came out from Texas and I was excited to see uh, 4,500 square feet homes for under 400,000, 300,000. So of course, you know, I, you know, my real estate hat was on. I was like, hmm. And the realtor out there said, yes, people from, uh, uh, Seattle and people from uh, all over are actually paying cash in those areas for those properties. So what you're saying is tested, truth, not theory. It is practice. But you saying that, and that's why I appreciate our build and we have our conversations because while I was excited from a buyer standpoint, I didn't realize the impact I was I would be part of for the people that actually live in that state or in that community in terms of driving their prices up and then ultimately shifting their whole uh, supply and demand in real estate market. Man, this is pretty deep, TJ. This is this is this is deep. And we are just we are just scratching the surface of this and we could go on and on. We are like over our time. I want to be sensitive to our time. So uh, you and I, we this is what we do. This is what we do. I just wanted to just bring people on and let them know contact information, how to get in touch with you, how to stay connected with what's up next. Because again, it is because of people like you that open the doors of opportunities for people like me to continue to get connected. And that is what I'm so happy and grateful for. So um, again, Ready, Set Real Estate, this is everything real estate related. And again, it supports our nonprofit organization, Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation. If you receive any valuable information from anything that I have put out, please, Take a moment and donate at realestate100youth.org. I will plug in the website. And just this is a cycle of life, you guys. Like TJ said, the information he gathered from school is when trades and and carpentry and shop was in the school. It's no longer in the school. So our children not learning these skills in school. But organizations like myself, individuals that partner with TJ, we're able to collaborate and bring this information to them. So thanks TJ so much for coming on. You have been awesome and I appreciate you so much and have a powerful and productive week. You guys, we are out. Thank you, Lisa.